It's me, Todd, and welcome to the 2018 Todd's Holiday Greeting Disc Christmas Video. If you looked at your Christmas cards, you know that the theme of this year's Christmas video is a porta potty Christmas. That's right, this year I'm spending Christmas in a porta potty in an effort to reduce my carbon footprint and help the environment. It's a Porta potty Christmas. I'm spending Christmas in a portalette. This year I came to realize that I needed to downsize and just about as downsized as you can get is living in a porta potty. So that's what I've chosen to do to do my bit to save the environment by reducing my carbon footprint and now I'm living in a portable toilet. And if you read my holiday letter, you know that I've actually spent the entire year living in this porta potty. Anyway, here it is, the 2018 Todd's Holiday Greeting Disc Christmas video, a porta potty Christmas. Yeah, so to help the environment by reducing my carbon footprint, I've decided to downsize and spend Christmas in this porta potty. Actually, I've been living in this porta potty for the past year because on New Year's I made a resolution to help the environment and downsize and reduce my carbon footprint. Happy New Year! Happy 2018! <laughs> This year I'm going to do something to really make a difference. My New Year's resolution is to downsize and reduce my carbon footprint to help the environment. I wonder how I can do that. I know, I'm going to spend the next year living in a porta potty. So yeah, it's kind of small and kind of dark and kind of damp and everything, but you know, it's really easy to decorate because there's not a lot of surface area. Just throw up a wreath and some, uh, some lights there, a little bit of a uh, ribbon over here. And uh, to decorate the inside is even easier because it's so small. A couple rolls of wrapping paper from Walmart, you can actually uh, decorate the whole thing. Small Christmas tree. And actually I got a couple things that I keep in there, my heater, everything. I power it all from a, a car battery. Yeah, so this year was my year to host the family for Christmas and, you know, they, they're all kind of saying, oh, it's kind of a coincidence that every year when it's your turn to host, you move into some kind of small place like a porta potty or a closet or a, a, a newly dug grave, something like that. But hey, that's just coincidence. It's got nothing to do. Anybody is welcome to come here for Christmas. It's just going to have to come one at a time is all. No big deal. Anyway, I'm going to start decorating now. And um, while I'm decorating, let me just play this song for you. Be right back. Alcohol, alcohol. I just want to thank you for helping me get through all those Christmas holidays with my family. You helped me cope with their insanity. When I needed you, you heeded my call. Thank God for you, alcohol. Alcohol, alcohol. I can still hear them now. 
out in the hall, arriving for Christmas dinner, insane relatives, crazy cousins, siblings, aunts, uncles, and screaming kids. You shielded me from them like a wall. Thank you again, alcohol. It really doesn't matter what kind you choose. Beer, wine, or spirits, as long as it's booze. Whether brewed or distilled or left to ferment, the thing that's important is the content of alcohol. Alcohol on Christmas dinner discussions turn into a brawl with heated disagreements about politics, religion, gay rights, guns, and those Hispanics. You sheltered me from the squall. What would I do without you, alcohol? Thank God for you, alcohol. Tiny Tim says, God bless us all. God bless us with you, alcohol. Thank God for you, alcohol. A short time later, Inside the newly decorated porta potty. A little ode to alcohol there. You know, it helps me get through the uh, the holiday season. Everybody needs their crutch, I guess. Tiny Tim had his. And I've got mine. And, uh, you know, um, Ebenezer Scrooge encountered three spirits on Christmas, but uh, I usually encountered uh, quite a few more. Yeah, so, um, anyway, um, welcome to the Todd's Holiday Greeting Disc Porta Potty Christmas video. I'm um, spending Christmas in this Porta Potty, uh, like I said, to help reduce my carbon footprint and, uh, and downsize and, and help the environment. So, um, you know, that, that's going pretty well. It's, it's kind of small, but, you know, you get used to it. Um, so anyway, uh, this is, this is the, uh, the Christmas video, and, um, before, before I go on, I just wanted to say, you know, um, if, if you're actually, if you're watching the video, you'll probably see that down below here. Um, there's a couple of things. So you can actually, um, if you wanted to, you can actually um, look at the archives of past videos. And you could also look at um, all the songs from most of the videos. And you can actually, um, you know, if you wanted to have some kind of theme music during, uh, during Christmas dinner, you know, or party, you can play that in a continuous loop. And there's also the uh, the countdown to Christmas and, um, you know, if, if, if you're a diehard, the countdown to New Year, which you can look at there, too. Today is December 1st. <laughs> Which means only 24 days left till Christmas. And speaking of which, um, a lot of you probably have gotten um, Sheila's uh, Countdown to Christmas or, or, or Advent Calendar or whatever. And, you know, it, it, it's pretty nice. You know, it's got this sort of uh, Victorian uh, cityscape and all, and, um, you know, I guess it's uh, the theme is a, a, a Dickens Christmas, and it's got, um, you know, the countdown thing on the back, and there's a lot of information, you know, and it's nice, and she put a lot of work into it and everything, but if you want something a little bit, you know, more exciting, maybe not so paper-based, you know, paper is pretty old, the Chinese have had it for about, I think, 2,000 years, you know, you might want to check out my Countdown to Christmas, which is on a uh, digital video. And, you know, you, they're, they're not mutually exclusive. You can actually probably put them together, you know, and, and while you're doing hers, you know, to um, make it a little bit more exciting, maybe, uh, you know, put mine on in the background. So uh, that's all I'm saying. But, you know, 
again, Shields is very nice. I'm, I'm not knocking it, but I'm just saying, you know, a little old fashioned. Mine's a little bit more cutting edge. Anyhow, you can also watch, um, if you look down here, um, the archives of my past videos, which began in 2005, even before there was um, YouTube or, or social media or anything, when you used to have to put stuff on a, um, a disc, actually. And that's why the, the, this site is called Todd's um, Holiday Greeting Disc, because it actually used to be, um, you know, on, a, on an actual disc. So, you know, kids out there... You can ask your parents about that. It was a, you know, sort of a round thing like this that you put in a DVD player and you watched on your television set. There's also, if you look, um, you know, down here in the playlist, there is the uh, Cheat Your Fate and Become the Antichrist um, holiday video game. And, uh, you know, if, if you don't have the, the board for that and the rules, you can actually email me at Todd's Holiday Greeting Disc um, at gmail.com. And I, I can send you the, uh, you know, the board and the rules and, and then the certificate in case you win, if you, you know, you want to play that too. It's the spinning baby Jesus and the seven deadly sins. Cheat your fate and become the Antichrist holiday family fun game. My soul went to hell and all I got was this lousy t-shirt. And now, another riveting, dramatic scene from Jesus, Up Close and Personal. Everybody, it's that time of the year again, Christmas time, aka my birthday, right? <laughs> I'd just like to thank all you guys for coming to my annual birthday bash. You guys, I gotta tell you, you are the best. You are the cream of the crop, right? The salt of the earth, am I right? <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. This is my 2009th birthday. Can you believe it? That's right. It's the first decade of my third millennium. Can you believe it? But let me tell you, I stopped counting at the second millennium. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I bet I don't look a day over 2,000, right? <laughs> Anyways, again, I'd like to thank you guys for coming. And, um, you know, we're going to have a fabulous time, fabulous time. And, um, you know, I, I was thinking, uh, I was reading back on my life story. You know, in other words, the New Testament, right? <laughs> and it always made me laugh how everything gets lost in translation, right? goes from the Aramaic to the Hebrew to the Greek to the Latin, you know, and then to the English. Who knows where it goes, right? But a couple of things that really make me laugh, boy, I'll tell you, there's one. It's, uh, it's about, uh, you know, my profession, right? They say, oh, yeah, Jesus, right? He was a carpenter. Come on, a carpenter? How many wood buildings have you seen in the Holy Land? Come on, a carpenter? <laughs> I'd have to work miracles to be a carpenter, right? No, the translation is wrong. I wasn't a carpenter. I was a caterer, as was my stepdad, Joseph. What a great guy. My stepdad, Joseph, great guy. Not such a great caterer, though. Joseph and son, that was us, boy. And I'll tell you, he catered a few of my events later on in my career, you know, and boy, <laughs> What a disaster. One of them was the Sermon on the Mount, which you might remember if you've read your Bible. And there was a multitude of people coming to see me, a multitude, you know, thousands and thousands. So my dad, well, my stepdad, Joseph, he shows up to, to cater the event, right? And what does he show up with? five fishes and five loaves. I'm like, Joseph, what are you thinking? You know, oh my God, it was crazy, crazy. Of course, you know, I turned on the magic and, and we got through it okay, but oh my God, my stepdad, Joseph, great guy, bad caterer, right? Another instance that comes to mind is at that wedding, you may remember when they ran out of wine and my mom's like, Jesus, you know, can you do something about this? Your stepdad didn't bring enough wine. This is going to look really bad for the business. So I'm like, 
Okay, Mom, and I turn the water into wine. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah, a little bit more magic, right? A little help from my real dad on that one, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, my stepdad, Joseph. Great guy, bad caterer. And speaking of archives, I don't know if you've heard anything about it, but um, they've actually made a, a pretty interesting discovery in, uh, in one of the caves where some of the Dead Sea Scrolls were found in, uh, in Galilee. And it has to do with actually uh, Jesus' birth and the nativity. And it turns out that they actually found a birthday card for Jesus. And, um, and here it is. Happy belated birthday, Jesus. Sorry we missed the party. Hope you can use the winemaking kit and that the Lowe's and Fish's lottery tickets are winners for you. All the best, Rick, Dennis, and Barry. Yeah, so you know, it was like a, a belated uh, birthday card, and um, apparently, in addition to the uh, the three wise men from the, the East, you know, Balthazar and those other two guys bringing the, the myrrh and the frankincense and the gold, there were actually another three wise men that came from the West that somehow, um, you know, were not mentioned in, in, in the Bible story um, for whatever reason, maybe because they got there late, and uh, so, um, but yeah, apparently, um, you know, one of them was from Africa, one of them was from Europe, and they think that the third one was actually all the way from North America, maybe sort of a Native American. And they really, the reason they, they, they think that is because um, in, uh, among with the, uh, the, the birthday card, they actually found a, um, a beaver pelt and some hawk feathers and some painted shells. So um, they're thinking, you know, that that was his, his, his gift. Um, apparently, the, the three wise men that came from the West were Dennis, Rick, and Barry, and um, yeah, apparently, um, you know, Dennis was maybe the Native American, Rick came, came from Africa, and Barry apparently was from Europe somewhere, but um, they got kind of mixed up, they were coming from the West, instead of following that, you know, that special bright star, they actually ended up following the North Star, and they, they, they went in the wrong direction for quite a while, and that, that delayed them, so by the time they got to, uh, to Bethlehem, you know, the whole thing was over, Jesus was gone, the birth was there, Everything happened, and they kind of missed it, so they, you know, they sent Jesus this uh, belated birthday card, which uh, technically, I guess, you know, is the uh, the first Christmas card, really. Um, I mean, Sheila's, you know, countdown to Christmas thing, one of her things, you open it up at the end, and you get the, you know, what was supposed to be the first Christmas card from 1845 or something, but apparently this card from, uh, you know, Zero was really the first Christmas card. It was a birthday card, technically, but, you know, for all intents and purposes, it was the first Christmas card. So anyway, yeah, so um, apparently Barry and Dennis got there late, and um, most of the stores were closed when they got there. So um, they managed to get uh, to, a, a, I guess, a, a place where um, uh, Barry managed to purchase a, uh, a winemaking kit, a home winemaking kit. It was one of those, you know, make your own beer, make your own wine stores. And he got a, a home winemaking kit. And, you know, Dennis was like, you know, Jesus is kind of young for that. And Barry's like, well, you know, you can use it later on in life. And, uh, you know, he did because, you know, you, you probably heard the story about turning water into wine. And, you know, it seemed like a miracle, but, you know, maybe not so much. You got a winemaking kit. You got the water. You got the stuff. It's pretty easy to turn the water into wine. So maybe it wasn't quite as miraculous as, as you know, it was, was, was kind of reported to be. And then also, um, Dennis, uh, once they finished that, there was nothing else open except a convenience store. And uh, you probably had this problem, too. You know, you're going Christmas Eve or a birthday party. Everything's closed. You need to get a gift. You go to the convenience store, right? And um, ironically enough, they're in the Mideast. Everybody's Mideastern there. There's a white European guy that's uh, running the, uh, the convenience store. So that's a little bit of, of biblical irony for you there. So, um, but anyways, um, Dennis basically ended up, which, you know, we all do um, sometime or another, buying a bunch of scratch-off lottery tickets and, and putting them in his belated birthday card, giving them to Jesus, thinking, you know, he could leave them, uh, you know, use them a little bit later on when he's a little bit older. And it turns out that the... Uh, the game that he, he actually picked was the loaves and fishes game, and you, you kind of match up these uh, these loaves and fishes, and if, if you know if you, you match them up, you get you win basically loaves and fishes, you know, because that was actually a, a pretty good thing to win at that time in, in that place. So um, it turns out that um, one of those tickets was pretty lucky. 
and uh, Jesus matched up the loaves and fishes, and um, you know, he basically won 10,000 loaves and 10,000 fishes. So again, loaves and fishes, he gave them to the people, maybe not as miraculous as people think, maybe, you know, I'm not saying it wasn't lucky because, you know, I think it's one in 10,000 are the chances of winning, you know, the big 10,000 loaves and fishes on, on the scratch off and he won it. So, you know, maybe he did have some kind of powers, but as far as the miracle of actually turning them into, you know, I don't know, it, it, you know, he did have the scratch off ticket is all I'm saying. And, and he did win a lot of loaves and fishes. So, so if you've seen any of my, uh, my past Christmas videos, you know that, um, generally, uh, there's a theme to them. And that generally, uh, there's a song um, that corresponds with that theme. And uh, since this video is a uh, porta potty Christmas, I thought I'd uh, compose a little uh, theme song called um, "A Porta Potty Christmas." So um, here it is. It's a porta potty. Christmas. I'm spending Christmas in this portalette. This year I came to realize I needed to downsize and just about as downsized as you can get is living in a porta potty. So that's what I've chosen to do to do my bit to save the environment by reducing my carbon footprint and now I'm living in a portable toilet. I'm spending Christmas in a portable toilet. It's a porta potty Christmas. I'm spending Christmas in this movable commode. I decided to commit to helping save the planet by making this porta potty my abode. It's not exactly optimum living conditions. Still, you won't hear me complain or gripe or grouse. Though it may be small and cramped, kind of smelly, dark, and damp, I'm happy in my portable outhouse. I'm happy living in a portable outhouse. I'm sure that I'll still have a very Merry Christmas, even though I'm here in a porta potty. The only thing that kind of worries me is this this porta potty doesn't have a chimney for Santa to come down on Christmas Eve and bring me any large presents. So instead, Santa, please feel free to leave cash which you can slide through the portholes air vents so santa i know there's no chimney for you to come down with any big presents or anything but you could just give me cash instead and you could slide it right through this air vent And now, another riveting, dramatic scene from Jesus, Up Close and Personal. Gosh, Ma, this is a great bar mitzvah. It's even better than Jaime Weisenstein's bar mitzvah. It's the best bar mitzvah ever. And you and Dad are the best parents ever. I'm glad you're having a good time, son. But Jesus, now that you're a man, there's something I think I need to tell you. Joseph is not your real father. Joseph's not my real father? Who is? Well, it's kind of a long story, but I think maybe this might help explain things. Messiah? I don't want a 
to be a messiah. I want to be a chariot racer, like Ben-Hur. Crucified? I don't want to be crucified. This is the worst bar mitzvah ever. <laughs> Stay tuned! The Todd Hartford and Friends Digital Video Musical Christmas Holiday Glittering Gala Extravaganza will return right after this word from our sponsor. A gift from God Brand Vodka. In the beginning, there was the Word, and the Word was vodka. That's right. Even before God created the day and the night, and the sun and the moon and the stars and the earth and the seas and all the plants and animals, he created vodka. Everybody knows that God created the world in seven days because it says so in the Bible. But what it doesn't say in the Bible is what God did on the seven nights between those seven days. And the fact is, God did exactly what you and I do after a hard day's work. He partied. And he partied with his own brand of vodka made from his own special recipe. And recently, that recipe was discovered in a secret cave in the Holy Land, not far from the cave where the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered over half a century ago. And we've used that recipe, God's own, to create a gift from God brand vodka, the celestial tasting vodka that will leave you feeling heavenly. So why not do what God does after a hard day's work, party down with a gift from God brand vodka. And remember, it's not just vodka. It's a gift from God. A gift from God brand vodka. The celestial tasting vodka that will leave you feeling heavenly. God, that's good vodka. Welcome to the Todd's Holiday Greeting Disc, 2018, Part 2. A Porta Potty Christmas. One good thing about living in a porta potty is you don't really have to go very far to use the bathroom. Hello, mother. Hello, father. At Bible camp, I got big mother. But Bible school is really swell. Jesus taught me to spell. We interrupt this program to bring you an important announcement from the North Pole. Ho, ho, ho! Hello, everybody! I'm Santa Claus, and I'm coming to you live, direct, from my workshop in the North Pole, with a special Christmas message. I'm here to let you know that this year I've gone from a two-list system to a three-list system. Instead of just a naughty and nice list this year, there will be a naughty list, a nice list, and an absolutely awful list. In years past, if you were on the nice list, I brought you gifts on Christmas Eve. And if you're on the naughty list, you got nothing. This year, if you're on the absolutely awful list, instead of just getting nothing, I will come into your house and take your prized possessions and bring them to the North Pole, and you will never see them again.
So if you're a bad person, you better examine your life and decide to make a change or you're going to lose everything. I'm telling you right now, take a good look at yourself in the mirror. Say to yourself, am I a bad person? And if I am, then Santa Claus is going to take all my stuff and I better change. That's it. That's my message. Change. Look at yourself. Change. If you're on the absolutely awful list, you're going to be left with nothing. All you good people, though, on the nice list, you're going to get some nice stuff this year, let me tell you. We now return to our regularly scheduled program. So I'm actually making this video in, in a pretty small space, you know, inside the, the porta potty here. So a uh, so very handy thing, obviously, is uh, one of these, which is a, um, you know, a, uh, a selfie stick. And these are very popular now. People are always taking some. So um, I actually, uh, I made up a, a little song about the selfie stick, which, um, you know, you might want to take a listen to uh, right now. Selfie stick, selfie stick with my iPhone on the end. Selfie stick, selfie stick, you are my best friend. And I take you, selfie stick, everywhere I go to take pictures of myself and also video. Here's me walking through the snow with my selfie stick, taking video of myself with just a click of the Bluetooth enabled button on my selfie stick handle, which I'll post to my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. Oh, selfie stick, selfie stick, attached to my iPhone. You are always there with me, so I never am alone. You take pictures of me all the time when I'm by myself. Then I post all my pictures online along with everybody else. You're so helpful, selfie stick, and that's why I need ya to take videos and pics to post on social media to Facebook and YouTube to Twitter and Snapchat and also to my webpage, web blog and WhatsApp Oh, selfie stick, selfie stick I'll say it again Selfie stick, selfie stick You are my best friend and I use you to take pics and vids when I do everything and I post them so the world can see that I'm so interesting. And though I may not get a view for my video or a like for my pic, it doesn't really matter so long as you're here with me, Selfie Stick. <laughs> So yeah, this year I'm spending Christmas in a porta potty to reduce my carbon footprint and downsize, but there've been other years when I spent Christmas in some other small spaces too, and some big ones. Here's a few of them. Hello everyone, my name is Jesus, I'm God's only son, and my birthday's on Christmas. You know, I was born, way back when, on a Christmas morn, in the town of Bethlehem. My stepdad Joseph was so cheap, that when he wasn't able, 
to find a cheap place to sleep. He booked us in a stable. My poor mother Mary, I felt so bad for her. She had to give birth to me in the straw in a manger. Between the mooing of the cow and the buying of the sheep. When I look back now, it's a wonder I got any sleep. And then three wise men came and brought me nice gifts. I don't recall their names, but I recall this they said. Happy birthday, Jesus. Happy birthday to you. I'm singing this song to say have a happy birthday and Merry Christmas too. Having your birthday fall on Christmas must be a really super fun thing. You've been away so long, has something gone wrong? We've been waiting for your second coming. It's been 2,000 years, Jesus, since you were here. Did we piss you off or something? Stay tuned! The Todd Hartford and Friends Digital Video Musical Christmas Holiday Glittering Gala Extravaganza will return right after this word from our sponsor, Angel Tears Home Enema System. Well, the holiday season is here, and what a great time of year it is. Great friends, great family, great celebrations, and of course, great food and drink. But sometimes during the holiday season, we all have a little bit too much great food and great drink, and we feel a little bit bloated and clogged up and irregular and constipated. When I'm constipated over the holiday season, I use Angel Tears Home Enema System to relieve me of that bloated, stuffed up feeling. Angel Tears Home Enema System is made from real angel tears, cried by real blessed angels into a blessed basin in a secret grotto far beneath the original birthplace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Holy Land. These tears are collected by the blessed angels after they cry them and mixed with blessed holy water which has been blessed by His Holiness the Pope in Rome. For quick relief from that bloated holiday constipation, you simply take your angel tears and holy water mixture and squirt it up your butt using the enclosed turkey baster. This turkey baster can also be used to baste your holiday turkey after you finish your enema. Angel Tears Home Enema System cleanses gently with real angel tears. And it not only cleanses your digestive system, it also simultaneously cleanses your soul. It cleanses you both physically and spiritually. So if you're suffering from holiday constipation, get Angel Tears Home Enema System. You'll be glad you did. If you're constipated, squirt some Angel Tears up your ass. And just like it says in the Bible, all things will pass. Angel Tears Home Enema Angel Tears Home Enema is now available in two strengths. 
For regular constipation, try Angel Gabriel's strength. And when you're really clogged up, try Super Strength Archangel Michael. We now return to our program. And now, another riveting dramatic scene from Jesus, Up Close and Personal. Another thing that gets lost in translation is at my birth, they're always talking about the three wise men. Oh my God, it wasn't the three wise men, it was one guy, and he was from the firm of wise men, wise men, and wise men, attorneys at law. My stepdad, Joseph, was going to sue the innkeeper because he had booked in advance, he had booked a room for us, that is me, I wasn't born yet, but you know, I was going to be born there, my mom, Mary, and Joseph, and then he had booked a stable for the donkeys, except something happened with the reservation at the inn, and all they had was the stable reservation and no room for us. Boy, was my stepdad sick. So yeah, he called Wiseman, Wiseman, and Wiseman, and he was going to slap a lawsuit on those innkeepers. But in the end, it just kind of blew over, because we were only there for a couple of days, you know. And after he got that frankincense and myrrh and everything, he was okay. But yeah, <laughs> again, Christmas, you know, what a time, what a time. A lot of memories, a lot of birthday parties, you know what I mean? A lot of birthday parties. But anyways... Thanks for coming, you guys. Again, you guys are the best, and hopefully we'll see you next year. My dad run, right? <laughs> okay, now, we'll see you. Merry Christmas, everybody, and a happy birthday to me, right? <laughs> okay, Dad, take me up. Check it out. I'll do the water into wine thing again for you. It's like my party trick. <laughs> Check it out. Spinning baby Jesus, spinning baby Jesus, spinning baby Jesus, watch him spin. Spinning baby Jesus, where will he lead us? Will it be to damnation, salvation, or sin? Whither has the spinning baby Jesus led you? According to the good book, he has led you to... Yo, check me. I'll be rapping, but by rapping, I don't mean hip hopping. What I mean is I'm a rapping these gifts I bought when I was Christmas shopping. Like a chump, I left my Christmas shopping to the last minute. And let me tell y'all, you homies think laughing or hood is tough, you ought to try shopping on Christmas Eve down the mall. The mall was so crowded, as soon as I walked in, I felt as though my personal space was invaded. People pushing, shoving everywhere. I almost got suffocated. 
I finally managed to get all the gifts on my list, but when I got to the checkout, I could have cried. The sales clerk said, so oh, your visa's maxed out. Your credit card has been denied. With no presents, I wouldn't have been able to show my face at my party's crib on Christmas Day. But as chance would have it, on my way home from the mall, I encountered an unattended sleigh. There was some reindeer attached to it, but the fat red-suited driver was up on a rooftop with a sack. And when he dropped out of sight down a chimney, I put on some packages that were loaded on the back. Turns out I got the perfect gift for everyone on my list, which shows that on Christmas Eve, miracles still can happen. And it's these gifts I pinch them off the fat sleigh that I'm here now. Gift wrapping. If they try to arrest me for robbing Santa Claus, I'll just say that I didn't do it. Yo, that's my Christmas story, and I'm sticking to it. Local color. Yeah, so here's a little bit of a local color for you. I took a walk around our neighborhood the other night to, to kind of see what our neighbors had put up in the way of Christmas decorations. Um, and, you know, there's quite a variety. Some were fairly extravagant. Some were a bit more basic. But, um, yeah, I, I like to include a little bit of local color uh, in my Christmas videos every year because I send these videos out to people who... Um, who know me, you know, my family, my friends, acquaintances, and, you know, I send it to, to people I know. Well, uh, mostly to people I know, um, aside from the the 20 or so people who I um, I randomly select from the phone book um, based on their residence in um, the highest per capita income uh, zip code areas of the United States. And the reason I do that is on the off chance that um, one of those people who I randomly send a card to um, would be a a a extremely wealthy elderly person and you know by extremely wealthy I, i'm i'm estimating the tens of millions of dollars um personal fortune and uh, and and they're, they're they're very lonely they're all alone in the world they've got no friends no family and they're so taken by receiving my christmas card and video at christmas time that they they track me down and they um they end up leaving me um a fortune in their will and again i'm estimating in the, the the tens of millions of dollars um not including the value of um the real estate and the um the works of art that 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 they'll also leave me what is it again it's a Porta potty Christmas. I'm spending Christmas in this small plastic restroom. I thought that I should start to try to do my part to save the earth from impending man made doom caused by overpopulation and depletion of resources and the environmental destruction that's going on. So I've eschewed luxury. For life in a porta potty, and I'm spending Christmas in a small plastic john. I'm spending Christmas in a small plastic john. So I'll be spending the holiday this Christmas by myself in this porta potty. I'm not the first one, in fact, there is a long list of people who were alone at Christmas just like me. For instance, there is Robinson Crusoe, alone in a hut that he made from pond fronds. And of course, there is Henry David Thoreau, alone in his cabin at Walden Pond. Ebenezer Scrooge was alone at Christmas until he was haunted by the spirit of Marley. And by himself in his cave sat John the Baptist, eating locusts and wild honey. Of course, John the Baptist did get his head cut off and served on a platter. Hmm, I think maybe I'll lock my doors tonight. It's a 
porta potty Christmas. I'm spending Christmas in this portable toilet. When I heard those Christmas bells ringing, I knew I had to do something to try to save the earth, and this is it. It may not be much, but at least it's something. And something's better than nothing, you must admit. So this Christmas you'll find me here in this porta potty doing what I can because I give a shit. Doing what I can because I give a shit. And now for our British viewers. It's a porta potty Christmas. I'm spending Christmas in a portaloo. In case you didn't know, to the loo is where we go in Great Britain when we need to pee or poo. Another term for toilet that we have in Great Britain is a slightly coarser word bog. And when Christmas dinner's been digested, upon the throne our bum is rested, and we produce our very own Christmas Yule Log. The Yule Log to which I refer is, of course, a facetious euphemism. But the actual Yule Log hails from pagan times and was a symbol of evergreen fertility during the winter months, much like the mistletoe and holly and it's still burned in Britain during the holiday season. Interestingly enough, in third world countries, actual human fecal matter is often collected, dried, and burned to heat the home. I'm sure most people probably think that since I'm Jesus and the Son of God and a third of the Holy Trinity and everything, that I'm pretty much omnipotent and know just about everything. And you know, while I do know quite a few things, there is one thing I'm very unsure of. And that has to do with my birthday. You see, my birthday, by coincidence, happened to fall on Christmas. And at my birthday, three wise men came and they brought me gifts. They brought me gold and frankincense and myrrh. Now that was great, you know, those are great gifts. But I've never really been sure since it was my birthday and Christmas if those gifts were for my birthday specifically or were for Christmas. And you see, if they were for my birthday, all well and good. If you get gifts for your birthday, you don't necessarily have to give gifts back because it's a special day and the gifts are specifically for you. However, for Christmas, it really is proper etiquette to give gifts in return if you receive gifts from someone. Well, I was never really sure and I was kind of embarrassed to give them gifts and, you know, um, make a, 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 a social faux pas, or, you know, I, 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 to be honest, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't know if they were birthday gifts or Christmas gifts. So for 2,000 years, I've, um, you know, I've been kind of avoiding the three wise men because it's just very embarrassing to, you know, to face them. They're probably thinking if they were Christmas gifts, you know, why didn't this guy, you know, give us some gifts back? But then again, if they were birthday gifts, it wouldn't be a big deal, but I don't know which I don't know. I just, I just, just don't know what they were. So, you know, for 2000 years, I've been avoiding these guys. And, and to be honest, that's the reason I haven't come back. I know when I left, I said, you know, I'll be coming back pretty soon to, you know, save everybody and whatnot. But the fact is I haven't come back because I'm just a little bit embarrassed to face the wise men. I just don't know what to do. So, um, I even wrote to dear Abby, but I never got a response. I think she thought it was a joke letter. I don't know. Anyhow, um, you know, hopefully, eventually, um, you know, the situation will be rectified and, and I can come back and, and save you and, you know, whatnot, uh, fight the devil, wh whatever. I got, I don't know, I, I got a manual or something, you know, that I have to look. I haven't looked at it for a while. But, uh, you know, until then, I don't know. I just don't know what to do. I'm, I'm just too embarrassed to come back. So anyways, um, what can I say except, you know, happy birthday to me and Merry Christmas and, you know, what the hell were those gifts for? Alcohol. Like holiday shoppers love the shopping mall, and football players love playing football, and crawly things love to creep and crawl. 
I love you alcohol. Like a proper lady loves her parasol. And a thoroughbred horse loves the hay in its stall. And the French people love Charles de Gaulle. I love you alcohol. Like a sequoia redwood tree loves to grow tall. And a skydiver loves to free fall. And Francis Ford Coppola loves Robert Duvall. I love you alcohol. Like a drag queen loves RuPaul. And a trawler captain loves to go out and trawl. And the atomic bomb tester loves bikini at all. I love you alcohol. Just like a Serpa loves to live in Nepal. And Charlie loves chocolate in that book by Rodol. Soybean farmers love to make ethanol. I love you alcohol. And just like a Texan likes to speak with a draw. And like a yachtsman loves to sail his yawl. And like a smoker loves the taste of menthol. I love you alcohol. Like an old lady loves her woolen shawl. And horror filmmakers love to appall. And thriller writers love to enthrall. I love you alcohol. Without alcohol, there would be no way that I could make it through Christmas Day. And so alcohol, once again, let me say, I love you alcohol. Thank God for you alcohol. Um, so I guess that's about it. You know, thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me in the, uh, the porta potty and everything. And, um, you know, hopefully that um, everybody can kind of contribute to uh, reducing their carbon footprint and, you know, helping the environment by downsizing and stuff. Maybe not to this degree, but, you know, to some degree anyway. So anyways, um, have a, uh, a happy porta potty Christmas and I will see you next year. Oh, yeah. And by the way, next year is actually going to be a... Um, a, a retrospective celebration of um, my 50 years of making uh, Christmas stuff. You know, it all started with uh, Mrs. Meniere's class uh, back in kindergarten when we, uh, we, we, we made this card in class. You know, and then, then, then up through the years, you know, uh, progressively. So, yeah, next year, big retrospective um, anniversary uh, Christmas video. So anyway, um, hope you join me for that. And uh, once again, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year, and I uh, will see you next year. Bye bye. It's a porta potty Christmas. I'm spending Christmas in a portalette. This year I came to realize that I needed to downsize and just about as downsized as you can get is living in a porta potty so that's what i've chosen to do to do my bit to save the environment by reducing my carbon footprint and now i'm living in a portable toilet actually i kind of need to use the potty part now so i'm going to close the door The preceding holiday video was brought to you by First Bank of Christ, where Jesus saves and also comes for checking, home, and auto loans. Jesus saves. I save at the First Bank of Christ.